Hello all. This is part 2 of the presentation and it will be the demonstration of the code that I've used. But before demonstrating that, let me just show you the dataset that I used. I used the spam based dataset. It contains a of 4601 data points that have been already classified as ham or spam. The last value indicate whether it's a spam or ham. In this case it is one. This means it is a spam email. More details can be found in documents like spam email is almost 40 percent ham email is 60 percent and there are other attributes like the, there are total 58 attributes 48 are continuous all the attributes are continuous the last attribute indicates whether it's a spam or not so let us let's now move ahead and demonstrate the code i'll first first run svm because it will take the maximum amount of time Meanwhile, we can discuss the other algorithm. This is the first algorithm that I have implemented. Navewise and B stand for Navewise. Here the accuracy is 81%. The execution time is 1.68 seconds. So as you can see that accuracy is fairly low but the running time is good enough for Navewise. This is the code for the name wise so what I have done is that I have read the data set that I already show you here is the file path this is the data set path the file is in CSV format I'll open the data set now I'll split the data set into testing and training here the ratio is 0.3 it means that 70% of the data set would, would, would be used for training purpose and 30% would be used for testing purpose now I'll use the training data set to train the classifier. Here is the training method. It uses this training set, self training set that I already stored in the split, met split method. Here. Test data set is appended and the corresponding values popped out from the training data set. So in training phase, it, what it does is find the standard mean and deviation corresponding to the attributes for the class and it summarizes them. The list is turn of the attribute as an attribute summary. This generates a model. Now we'll use this generated model for prediction purpose. This is the list that, that it has been returned and now I'm using this list to get the test result. In test result, this uh, this vector stand for the predictions that I'll be storing. That is, it will indicate the class label. I'll call it test method. In that test method, it will find the attribute probability using the Gaussian distribution. Gaussian probability function. I already know the mean and standard deviation of the test data, trip of the training data. Sorry, and this is this is our current data. So I can use and find the class probability. Now as all the features are independent, so for all the features, the new as in using the new assumption, we can just find the class attribute corresponding to that particular class and we can just multiply them. This will give us a class attribute probability for that class. Now using this attribute prob probability, we will return which class does this data point belong to? If it is a ham email, the attribute probability of the ham email would be more than the attribute probability of a spam email. This would be stored in test result and we will get it back here. It's a test result. Now in evaluation phase, we will use a test result to get the accuracy, false positive and false negative ratio. And this is a simple, very simple code to evaluate we know the test result, we know the actual data set, test set, we can just calculate the predicted value with the actual value and if they are same we can just increment the count. So we can just return the total correct prediction upon the length of test data set into 200. This, give us, this will give us the accuracy similarly for, for false positive and false negative. False negative is very important because as I already 
discussed in presentation. The false negative indicates that an email has been wrongly classified as spam email. Let us now discuss the next algorithm. This will take some time. Now let's move ahead. This is the implementation. I have used the sklearn library for the implementation purpose. Here again, this same test data set is same. The spam based data set. I have used three kernel, RPF kernel, linear kernel, and polynomial kernel. Let us see the test result. So as you can see the RPF kernel the accuracy is 93% for linear kernel it's 92% for polynomial it's 93.62% so the accuracy is almost same but the difference lies in the total execution time. RPF kernel it takes abnormally high time while for the rest of them it's comparable. Again the false, false positive and false negative ratio are also comparable and they are fairly low as compared to nearby. So let, let us now discuss the actual implementation. I have created this data set and target data set from the uh, given data set. I, I will use a scalar library. I will use the fit method to create, and create the model. Here what it does is that based on the split index, the ratio is again 70-30. So starting 30 values will be used for training purpose and next 30 percent value would be used for testing purpose here svm.svc what it does is is that it generates a model that is which kernel type it belongs rbf kernel linear kernel or which one so here i am using svc this belongs to rbf kernel if I'll use linear uh, SVC, this is linear kernel, and for polynomial, I'll just pass the parameter as a poly. Using the test uh, training data point, X train and Y train indicates the label. Uh, I will generate a model. This model is then used for prediction purpose. It will return the predicted list. This is predicted list that for this corresponding test this mean this is y test bar you can say it is y test bar that is the predicted labels now what is left is to get the accuracy now we know the predicted list we know the actual test data label so we can get the accuracy as we did in nearby's case so this is similar implementation and for false positive and false negative also we follow similar implementation so this is the implementation for support vector machine next is random forest random forest basically is an ensemble algorithm and it is made up of many decision trees you can control the parameters also like here i can pass 10 this indicates that there will be 10 decision tree in this random forest the accuracy here is 93.19% if I will pass it to say like 1 there is just one decision tree so the accuracy drops down to 84% so you can similarly test for other values so let us now discuss the implementation but yeah before proceeding that accuracy is 92% the execution time is fairly low the false negative ratio is also very low so this is actually a very good algorithm for this given data set here again i use the sklearn library for the implementation again following the same procedure i have done i split the data set into 70 30 ratio this is how i have passed the argument there are three command line argument one stands for the number of decision tree, one stand for the split and the one stand for the depth. Depth means the minimum max maximum depth of the decision tree that would be in the random forest. So now I used classification. Classification it will do is just divide the data set into two point and we will call random forest. 
in random forest i have used random forest classifier to create a forest based upon the estimators that is the number of trees split and depth i've used then the fit method and provided the training feature and training label that have been already calculated here data training feature data training data train and this will give us a model classify model using that classify model we'll feed it with the test features and we'll get the predicted values now we have the predicted values we have the actual values so we can use those to calculate our accuracy false positive and false negative ratio as we have done earlier here output i correspond to the predicted values here it's the actual values so this is simple implementation using sqlm library the accuracy is fairly high now let's see like if canon has this running yeah it has as you can see uh no sorry this is i have to run canon again it will take some time let's say case 3 so uh, meanwhile this code runs i'll just go through the canon code k nearest neighbor is a lazy algorithm it means that it defers the building of model till the pred predictions are required here is the class knn it has got modules for opening the data set, dividing the data set, getting test length, finding the Euclidean distance that has been used to calculate the distance between the test data set instances and training data set instances, get k neighbors and from the, that k neighbor I will get the label count, I will then sort that thing and get the class corresponding with that value. So. I have created an object for the KNN, open data set and use similar split ratio for this thing, 70-30, 70 goes for training and 30 goes for testing. This will store our prediction. I will find the K nearest neighbor. As you can see there is no actual training phase required, so I am not doing anything to train. I will just get the k nearest neighbor for that corresponding test data instances. This is a test data instance that I, uh, I pass. In get k neighbor. It will find the k nearest neighbor. It will first calculate the Euclidean distance, sort the distance, and the first k values in this sorted, sorted vector will be your neighbors. Now I have get, got the neighbor list that is the k nearest neighbor. I will use this list to calculate to find actually what is the label count. In this label count I will use a class counter. I will increment the values corresponding to a particular class. So whichever value is larger like if it is a hem class counter value for spam would be higher than class counter value for hem and I will just return that particular value. This will indicate that value. So, what I'll do is now I have to s I'll sa save these predictions, and I I'll use these predictions to make to calculate accuracy, false positive and false negative ratio as I have done earlier. This is similar implementation for false positive, false negative. As you as you can see the code is still running it will take abnormally high time meanwhile let us go through try random forest for case for 17 you can pass other parameters also like the number of tree minimum tree suppose i say that one is the number of addition tree minimum depth is one in this case you will see that the accuracy has been reduced to 68 percent so it just 
a single node basically for one decision tree and two level of depth accuracy increase to 71 percent so similarly you can check for other values so you can see that accuracy and accuracy and other parameter are a function are depend upon the number of decision tree and the maximum depth so okay and then it's finished so as you can see here the accuracy is 81.81 percentage the ham that has been classified as spam that is the false negative is also very high execution time is also very high so as you can see that compared to all the algorithm KNN performs poorly compared to all of them why random forest is the best algorithm for this given data set and SVM running time and accuracy close closely matches random forest thank you